God is better to us, certainly, than we are to our own selves. Thank God for, again, those that went down in water on this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank God for them. And I thank God for the brothers that are here today that I met for the first time. Thank Brother Jenkins out of, is it Ocala, Florida? Raise your hand, brother. We thank God for Brother Jenkins. He is our baptism today in the name of Jesus Christ. Ocala, Florida. Also, we have another brother, I believe, from Albany. Is it Albany, Georgia? What's your name, brother? Brother Williams, nice to meet you, my brother. He is our baptism likewise. Today in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank God, saints, for all things. We appreciate all of you that are here on today. I'm glad for all these elders, bishops that are here with us on today. Thank God for Bishop Urban Bryant. We thank God for him. Thank God for my beloved brother here, John Hatley. I started to ask him in the restroom how you feel, and I caught myself. <laughs> he done let everybody already know how he feel. <laughs> he's, he's feeling pretty good, y'all. Thank God for Minister Kev. Thank God for <laughs> Minister Phil here. Brothers and sisters, I thank God most of all for Jesus Christ. Yes, sir. Thank you, Lord. Thank God for Jesus Christ. I thank God for his death, his burial. And we certainly do thank God for his resurrection. Valdosta, we've had a good weekend. It's been good here, y'all. Full house both days. I thank God for all of you all, and I mean that. Glad to get a chance to meet my mother, Mother McClellan, way across Georgia. Thank God for her. She done told me several times, she said, Ella Murray, I got your name and your number on my refrigerator. She said, if anything ever happened to me, I want my family to call you. I don't want anybody preaching over my body. I want them to call. I said, Mother, let's not talk about that for another 25 years. <laughs> Ain't no, and look, we don't even want to have that conversation right now. Do you understand? You, you, look here, you're going to be right here. We need, you, we need you right here, Mother. We thank God for you all. Saints, today I want to take my time and I want to teach God's people. I'm glad for the Coopers here. Coopers, y'all raise your hand. I thank God for y'all. Macal Macalpin. Macalpin, Florida. Thank God for them. You know, I thought about them in reading the scripture when Paul and the saints was over there in the 28th chapter of Acts. It was amongst them saints there, and Paul talked about how they showed them no little kind. Meaning they showed them great kindness. I can say that the Cooper family have showed my wife and I this weekend no little kindness. As we was traveling, coming here, they wanted us to stop by. And, and we did that. We stopped by and went to their place there in a nice place, sitting on 10 acres out in the woods. And I'm a country boy. John, you can shoot deer from the porch. Now you know I'm at home. <laughs> Cooked us nice dinner. Made us homemade ice cream. Homemade. Steaks off the grill. Offered us to stay, there, stay right there. I teased John yesterday when he and I talked on the phone. I told him what all y'all had did for us. And I told him like the scripture, when, when Jesus was talking about the woman and, and, and how he had came into Simon's house. And Simon ain't did nothing for him. <laughs> and this sinner woman, what all she had did. 
So now I'm here, I'm here in your city, and you ain't did nothing. <laughs> I said, here the Coopers, how they done treat us. And I'm, look at it, I thought we were better than that. You ain't did nothing for them. He right away said, well, bro, I'm out of town. I'm out of town now. I'm out of town. So we're we going we gonna to excuse him this time because he was out of town. But next time, I thank God for you all. Thanks, we appreciate again all of you that are here. We thank God for God giving your mind to be here with us on today. Today we want to take our time just like last night and I want to, I want to teach. I want to teach. Y'all, y'all, you know, y'all here preaching from uh, Ella Hadley and Bishop Bryan and, and Kev and all, we just going to teach you. I just want to take our time and, and just, just walk through the scripture. Because as I said last night, the Bible said my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Now John was testifying about the Holy Ghost. And that's what I want to talk about. Yes, sir. I want to talk about receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost. Which is the seal of God. That's God's seal. If you don't have the gift of the Holy Ghost, you have not been sealed. Do you understand? I often compare it to like a layaway. Whenever you go to Sears or Walmart, wherever, and you want to put something on layaway, you don't take it home right then. You put a certain percentage down on it. Letting them know you have laid claim to this you will come back later to get it. That's what the Holy Ghost is. The Lord puts a seal on us. His spirit. He don't take us home with him right then. He just put that seal on us, laying claim on us. That we belong to him. When he come back, remember the scripture said, he know them that are his. How do he know them? They got a seal on them. Do you understand? You better make sure you're sealed. Do you understand? Make sure you're sealed now. Let me tell you something. We've had good services here. My God, all that is good. But make sure you got something to get you out the grave. The Bible said if that spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwell in you, that spirit that raised Christ from the dead from that grave shall also quicken your mortal bodies. But it's got to be in you now. Look, at, let me tell you something. Don't play around with your soul. Don't gamble with it. I heard John say someone testified that they don't know if they have the Holy Ghost or not. Well, let me help you. If you don't know whether you got it or not, the best thing for you to do, to do is seek the Lord for the gift of the Holy Ghost. Because one thing about the Holy Ghost, I read somewhere where the Bible said this thing is like fire. Shut up in your bones. Now, 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 I don't know how it is here in Georgia. But uh, if you put your hand on a stove in Alabama, you don't have to wonder whether you got burned or not. I, I, I put my hand on a stove. I, I'm not sure. Oh, no. That stove must not have been on. If you got the Holy Ghost, if this fire done got down within you, you're going to know it. Amen. Do you hear what I say? You're going to know that. Amen. Amen. Nobody have to tell you you got the Holy Ghost. If you got the Holy Ghost, you're going to tell others you got the Holy Ghost. I want y'all to hear Elder Murray. I speak this from experience. Coming up 17, 18 years old in a church calling on the Lord Jesus. And let me tell you something. Very sincere brothers and sisters there. 
calling on the Lord Jesus. This was back in my late teens. I had an experience with God. I want y'all to hear Elder Murray. I had an experience with God right in that church. And everybody that was there saw it. Where's Sister Hunt at? Raise your hand, Sister Hunt. Was you there? Sister Hunt was there. Me and her go way back. Do you understand? She was there when this little jitty bug stumbled up in the church. I, I guarantee you she never imagined a little jitty bug one day would be her pastor. Ain't that so? She was already there when I got there. Do you understand? She was there when I was calling on the Lord Jesus. Sister Hunt was right there. She was there when the spirit got a hold to me. Listen to what I said now. It got a hold to me, but it didn't get in me. I speak this from experience. It got a hold to me. The spirit got a hold to me. I danced all across that church. Man, let me tell you something. I danced, brother. Ain't nobody have to hold me. I wasn't, everything was decent and in order. Spirit had a hope to the, to the young brother, but the spirit didn't get in it. Spirit moved me. I danced. I rejoiced. After that experience, many of them there was telling, telling me, you got the Holy Ghost. But I couldn't live right. Bro, I couldn't stop sinning to save my life. But they telling me, you got it. You got it. I'm like, I do? Really? Well, then I must be an unusual type of devil because I ain't got no power to live right. I can't resist the devil. Look, I had an experience. God, his spirit moved upon me, but he didn't get in me now. So, so many of them was telling me, you got it, you got it, you got it. I knew something was wrong, saints. This is the mistake you make in telling folk they got the Holy Ghost. You don't do that. You don't do that. They got to know that for themselves. Amen. Amen. Now, I did not receive the Holy Ghost in that experience. I did not, although they told me I did. Now, let me tell you when I received the Holy Ghost. Now, now I can tell everybody this. You see, I received the Holy Ghost at the age of 19 in Hartsville, South Carolina, under the late Bishop L. Hunter. Do you understand? Look here. If you're standing in the pulpit, I was over on the right wing. In a metal folding chair. I can break it all down to you. Do you in a metal folding chair, brother. Do you understand? We was in a two-hour prayer from 10 a.m. until 12 noon. Folks don't pray like that no more. When the pastor called for prayer like that, they think he lost his mind. But let me tell you, them old timers was wrong. They was wrong in a lot of things, but they wasn't wrong in everything. Amen. Look at they had that right. Prayer, you got to have a prayer life. Amen. I heard one of the brothers testify about how grateful he is now that he's got a prayer life. Let me tell you something. If you don't pray, you won't stay. Amen. Do you understand? And I say, if you don't fast, you won't last. Amen. You got to pray and you got to fast in this way. Yes, Do you understand? I know flesh don't want to eat. Flesh want to eat. Amen. Flesh don't want to fast. It want to eat. That's right. Just like flesh don't want to pray. It want to watch TV. Yes. That's right. But you got to bring that body under subjection and do the things that's my God that's going to edify and lift you up spiritually. Yes, sir. Let me tell you something. That's right. If you weak spiritually, don't blame nobody but your own self. Yes, sir. Examine your own self. Amen. Hallelujah Amen. to God. My God, this Bible gives us the recipe how to have some strength around here. You got to fast and you got to pray. Amen. Hallelujah to God. 19 years old. Hartsville, South Carolina. Over in that right wing calling on the Lord Jesus in a 10-hour prayer. Prayer was from 10 a.m. to 12 noon. At about 11.55, five minutes left in that prayer. Five minutes left in that prayer. Something happened. Look at bro. Ain't nobody got to tell me nothing. I can tell you what happened. Something happened. Oh, and I'm going to tell you something now. I'm going to tell you. A lot of folks say environment don't, don't, don't make a difference. It do make a difference. Notice on the day of Pentecost, they was all together on one accord. They was on one accord, same mind. Yes, Do you understand? Let me tell you something. That two-hour prayer, everybody in prayer. Everybody, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. It created the right environment. Do you understand? It created the right environment. And at about 11.55, five minutes left, 
saints of God, I was on my knees. And let me tell you something, the spirit of God, it got down upon me and got in me. Let me tell y'all something. When that spirit got in me, my mouth came open. I remember gripping the legs of that chair, saying to myself, this is it right here now. Thank you, Jesus. This, this is it right here. I gripped the legs of that chair, spirit got in me, my mouth came open, and I started talking. And let me tell you something, it was a language that I didn't understand, but I didn't have no control over it. I didn't start it, and I couldn't stop it. Do you understand? It was as the spirit gave me utterance. Yes, sir. Let me tell you, after that experience, Man, let me, I rejoiced over in that corner, God knows. I rejoiced. After that experience, I remember riding down them country roads of Hartsville, South Carolina. And every time I would meditate and reflect back on what had just happened, the spirit would quicken my body. My God, look, every time I think about it, my body would move. I said, Lord, have mercy. The things beforehand that I could not resist, now, I got power. I found myself being able to walk away from those things. I found myself saying, no, I'm not going to do that. And could stick to it then. Amen. Oh, before I would say I wasn't going to do a thing, but would go right back to it. But now I got power. When the Bible said after the Holy Ghost has come, you should receive power, that's true, brothers and sisters. If you receive the Holy Ghost, that's power. You got power. Give me John 16, son, verse 7. Let's teach God's people, man. St. John chapter 16. And we're going to start reading, twin, at verse number 7. Take your time with it, son. What did it say? Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. Jesus is telling them that it's expedient unto you that I do what? That I go away. Read it. For if I go not away, if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. The comforter is the Holy Ghost. Now Jesus is making this statement while walking here in the earth. He said, if I go not away, the comforter won't come unto you. Why couldn't the comforter come while he was here? Because he kept them while he was here. Amen. You didn't need two comforters on the scene. Jesus kept them. Remember when he prayed? He prayed and told the Father, I've lost none Amen. but one. The son of perdition. And the only reason I lost him, the scriptures had to be fulfilled. Amen. What did the Bible say, twin? For if I go not away. If I go not away. The comforter will not come unto you. The comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart. If I depart. I will send him unto you. Notice who's sending it now. Amen. I will send, it unto, send him unto you. Amen. Do you understand? So Jesus got to depart out of the earth in order for the Holy Ghost to come. Do you understand? Now, some said, well, the Holy Ghost didn't come until the day of Pentecost. You, you can't say it like that because I can read where some had it before the day of Pentecost. Amen. Only thing you can say is that it was not poured out as a whole until the day of Pentecost. Amen. I can get the prophet David where David declared, Lord, take yes, not. Thine Holy Spirit from me. Yes, sir. That's long before the day of Pentecost. Do you understand? That's I right. can get Zechariah, Elizabeth, John the, John the Baptist. I can get all of them with the Holy Ghost. Yes, sir. Before the day of Pentecost. But it wasn't poured out as a whole until the day of Pentecost. Amen. Do you understand? So now, he declaring here. Read that again, twin. What did he say? If I, for if I go not away. If I go not away. The comforter will not come unto you. Comforter will not come unto, come unto you. But if I depart. If I depart. I will send him unto you. I'm going to send the comforter to you. Jesus now is about to depart. Give me Luke 24, son, round right about verse 49. Jesus now is about to depart. And I want y'all to pay attention to what Jesus is going to tell them. Luke 24, 49 said what? And behold. Behold. I send the promise of my father upon you. I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tear ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. Tarry in the city of Jerusalem. Stay right there in Jerusalem until, do, until what? Until you be endued with power from on high. And twin, he said to do what? Did he say tarry? Tarry. All tarry means is to wait. Amen. Now tarry has been... Misunderstood. 
folks take it as if people come together and foam at the mouth and wall on the floor and all kind of activity and say, well, that's tarrying. Or some say that's purging. Well, let me tell you something. I can show you scripture where those who wallowed on the floor and foamed, the Bible declared they had a dumb spirit. Bible ain't said nothing about that being the Holy Spirit. The Bible called that a dumb spirit. That spirit needs to be cast out. Do you understand? One thing about the spirit of God, it don't behave itself unseen. Listen, if the spirit fall on a brother or sister, they're not going to black your eye. We don't have to have an ambulance parked at the church just in case. Amen. Just in case the Holy Ghost fall, bro. You know, you never know when the spirit is going to fall here, so we keep the medics right there on standby. No, Let me sir. tell you something. If, if a spirit is falling in there like that, then let me know where your church is located. I will make sure I never come. We laugh, but I'm going to tell you something, brother. I done seen all this stuff. Hmm. Myrna seen all this stuff. We had a young lady work for us. Young lady came to work that Monday morning. My wife can bear witness. Her eyes sticking out like this. Black, blue, and swollen. Like she'd been in a fight. Young lady, what happened to you? What's wrong? Oh, we had a time at church yesterday. Mm. Y'all did, huh? <laughs> we had a time. Spirit. Let me tell you, that ain't the spirit of God. Spirit of God don't act like that. Do you understand? As many times as the spirit of God that came upon me, even driving my car, I ain't never had a wreck. That's right. Do you understand? Never. Spirit of God don't behave itself unseen. All this activity you see going on in religion, they want to blame it on the spirit. It's not the spirit. Spirit ain't got you squirming, squirming on the floor like a snake. Do you understand? That ain't the spirit of God, but I've seen it. I've seen it. Do you understand? I've been in prayer with some. And they didn't claim no Holy Ghost. My God, man, they were squirming like a snake because they had an unclean spirit within them. That's why they were squirming, brother. They were squirming like a snake because a spirit was in them that was unclean. I was next to them praying. I want you to hear me talk. You can't blame all this activity on God. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. That's right. Do you understand? What did the Bible say, twin? And behold, I send the promise of my father upon you. I send the promise of my father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem. Stay in Jerusalem. Until you be endued with power from on high. Tarry, wait until you get some power. Saints, don't run out here without no power. And that's what many have done. They ran out here. My God, man, every other folks around them perhaps received the Holy Ghost. So they just start claiming the Holy Ghost. And you run out here and you ain't got no power. It's too many spirits out here. You've got to have the real deal, something that's going to be able to keep you out there in this world. Do you understand? Don't claim something that you don't have or you're not sure that you have. Mm -hmm. I'd rather just wait on the Lord. Just wait on the Lord. That's it. Hear me talking now. So he's, ter he's telling them to tarry. Wait in Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. Don't leave Jerusalem. Stay right there. Give me Acts 1-4. Acts 1-4. I want y'all to stay with me now. They're here in Jerusalem. What did the Bible say, twin? And being assembled together with them. Jesus was assembled together with them. Commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem. Stay right there in Jerusalem. But wait for the promise of the Father. Wait for the promise of the Father. Which saith he. Which saith he. Ye have heard of me. You've heard of me. For John truly baptized with water. John baptized y'all with water. But ye, shall be, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. You shall be baptized with what? With the Holy Ghost. All John could do was baptize you with water. But you shall be baptized how? With the Holy Ghost. Forty years from now. Not many days hence. Thirty years from now. Not many days. Ten years from now. Not many days. Saints make the, receiving the Holy Ghost, they make that difficult. It's not difficult. Not at all. It's not difficult. You know what it takes? A made-up made up mind. mind. Yes, sir. You got to make up your mind who you going to serve. You can't be straddled the fence. And one thing about it, 
The Lord know the very intents of your heart. So you can't fool God. You can't fool the Lord Jesus Christ. He know the intents of your heart. You got to be willing to surrender all. Amen. The problem with many, they don't mind surrendering some. That's right. But certain things they want to hold on to. They're not yet ready to give it all up. That's right. The Lord wants you to give it all up. Amen. He wants all your heart. He wants all your soul. And he wants all your mind. Amen. He wants you to be willing to give it all up that he can step in. The Lord don't want to come in you and have to share you. Amen. Do you understand? Amen. He wants all of you. And a lot of us, my God, a lot of saints ain't got to that point where they will, they're willing to give it all. Amen. You got to give it all up. Amen. I say you got to give it all up. All of it got to be given up. Do you understand? The Bible said what, son? For John truly baptized with water. John baptized with water. But ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. You're going to be baptized with what? The Holy Ghost. When? Not many days hence. Did it say not many days? Amen. It don't take 20 years to receive the Holy Ghost. No, sir. It takes you to make up your mind. Let me tell you something. This, this, my son right there, he done testified himself mm -hmm. how, you know, we was encouraging him to call on the Lord for the Holy Ghost. And he, you know, he was, you know, very, what's the word? Laid back, laxidocious, how, how they say? Just, look, just, just not very serious about it. Not serious about it. And you know what? He wasn't serious about God. And God wasn't serious about him. Do you understand? But when he got serious with God, God got serious with him. Yes, sir. Thank you, Lord. The Lord ain't slack concerning his promise. The slackness was in him. But when he got serious with God, God got serious with him. And filled him with the gift of the Holy Ghost. Do you understand? Came to my house, received the Holy Ghost, I believe, at the church. Came to my house, my God, man. At, stepped in my living room, spirit all over it. I'm like, oh, honey, got you now. Got you now. Do you understand? Got you now. But the slackness, the slowfulness wasn't in God, it was in him. When you make up your mind sincere, the Lord is going to be right there. Amen. Amen. He's going to be right there waiting. Hallelujah to God. Waiting on you. Bible says, he that hung and thirst after righteousness shall, shall be filled. Yes, the Lord is waiting right there yes, on you to make up your mind. Yes, sir. All he wants you to do is get serious about it. That's right. That's get serious about it. Yes, sir. My God, man, a lot of folks say they're trying to press toward the Lord, but they're looking back the whole time. You ain't serious. No, sir. You ain't serious. You got to press toward the Lord and don't look back. Don't look back. Hallelujah to God. One scripture says that if, if you look back, you ain't fit Amen. for the kingdom of God. What you looking back there for? What you looking back for? Amen. Paul said we press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God, which is in Christ Jesus. That's where I'm pressing. I don't want what's back there. Amen. Paul said forgetting those things which are behind. You got to let that stuff go back there. Let it go. Hallelujah to God. You have to let it go, brothers and sisters. I want you to hear me talking now. The Bible said, not many days hence. Amen. Not many days hence. What did it say, twin? When they therefore would come together. When they came together. Read it. They asked to him, saying. I want you to notice what they're going to do here. Because we do the same thing. Mm -hmm. What happened, twin? Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel to Israel? You asking all these questions. You need the Holy Ghost. That's right. Why are you trying to get so deep? <laughs> all, you know, asking it. Look, look, watch what Jesus going to tell them. Read it, twin. And he said unto them. What did Jesus say? It is not for you to know the times or the seasons. You know what Jesus telling them? Don't even worry about all that. You need to be focused on receiving the Holy Ghost. What you worrying about all this for? That's what he's telling them. That ain't for you to know all that. I hear folk call me, <laughs> going to the mark of the beast. 
I need you to break down the mark of the beast. Man, you ain't even got the Holy Ghost. Yeah, the Holy Ghost. <laughs> what you, <laughs> I'm trying to, my God, man, help, help you receive the spirit for the beast don't take you over. <laughs> you focus on the wrong thing. You focus on the wrong thing. You need to focus on receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost. That should be your focus. That should be your main point of coming to the house of God. What did it say, son? It is not for you to know the times or the seasons. It ain't for you to know the times or the seasons. Which the Father hath put in his own power. The Father put that in his own power. But you shall, repeat, but you shall, but you shall receive power. The Lord put that in his own power. Amen. He said, but you shall receive power. Yes, sir. Look, look, look what Jesus is telling them. In other words, you focus on you receiving power. Yes, sir. Let, let God handle his business. You just focus on receiving some power. That's right. The Bible says you shall do what? But you shall receive power. You shall receive power. After that, the Holy after, Ghost. After, after, after. That what? That the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. Is come upon you. Hallelujah. When the Holy Ghost come upon you, you got power now. You got power. And what's going to happen after that, twin? And you shall be witnesses unto me. Wait a minute. You know you're not a true witness until you receive the Holy Ghost? That's right. Look here. I'm a true witness. I shared my testimony earlier of how and when I received the Holy Ghost. That makes me a true witness. Look, you can read what happened with the apostles. You can read what happened with Peter and Paul, their experience, but are you a true witness? In order for you to to be a true witness, you got to have your own experience. Do you understand? You got to have your own experience. Do you understand? It's one thing to read what happened to them on the day of Pentecost, but can we close the Bible and you tell us about your day of Pentecost? Do you understand? You got to have your own day of Pentecost. Hallelujah to God. You got to be a witness yourself. Amen. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah. My God, you got to taste this thing for yourself. Taste and see the Lord God knows he's good. Amen. My God, you got to taste for yourself, brothers and sisters. Amen. Hear me talking Amen. now. What did it say, son? But you shall receive power. You shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon After you. After the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me. You going to be what? Witnesses unto me. When? Both in Jerusalem and in all Judea. And? And in Samaria. Read that. And unto the uttermost part of the earth. You'll be a true witness. Amen. True witness. Amen. Hear me talking now. Amen. Brothers and sisters, in order for you to be a true witness, you got to have the gift of the Holy Ghost. Jesus had to leave here in order for the Holy Ghost to come. Now he's telling them what's going to happen to them when they receive the Holy Ghost, they're going to have power. Now give me Acts 2 and 1, son. Give me Acts chapter 2 and at verse 1. Y'all having trouble here, brothers? If you need twin to come over here, brace to get your Bible and come read. Let twin get us back up. Y'all can go hardwire if you need to. All right. Brothers and sisters, it, it, this, this is technical stuff here. It has a mind of its own sometimes. But it'll be all right. It'll be all right. But continue to read, Twin, until he gets saved. Acts 2 and at verse 1. What did it say, son? And when the day of Pentecost was fully come. When the day of Pentecost was what? Fully come. Fully come. They were all with one accord in one place. One accord. Amen. That's what I said earlier. Yes, sir. Folks say environment don't mean nothing. Environment means everything. Do you understand? Environment means everything. Hear me talking now. Environment means everything. You got to keep it recording, Brace. You, you turn it off. Environment re- means everything. Do you understand? Because one accord, they was all together on one accord. What did the Bible say, son? And suddenly there came a sound from heaven. Suddenly there came a what? Sound from heaven. There came a sound from where? Heaven. And what happened? As of a rushing mighty wind. And it came as a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. Did it fill all the house? Amen. It filled all the house. Yes, sir. Brothers and sisters, think about that. The whole, look here, everybody in the house. It filled all the house. 
Everybody that was in the house, it filled all the house. Think, of, think about it, brothers and sisters. It filled all the house. Yes, sir. All the house. Thank you, Lord. All the house. I want you to hear me. All the house was filled. That's written for our learning. Do y'all know the same thing can happen today? Do you know the same thing can happen today? That's right. Let me, let me show you something. The same thing can happen today. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If all the people of God can get on one accord. One mind. Yes, sir. Not this mind. Thinking about this. No, sir. This one thinking about work tomorrow. Sister thinking about all them clothes you got to wash when she get home. I got to cook. Minds everywhere. Don't you know the scriptures teach? The scriptures teach. When you enter into the closet, shut the door. Shut the door. Keep it going, Brother Wally. Keep it going. Shut the door. When you shut the door, what is that saying? Block everything else out. You have to block everything else out. Do you understand? Don't be distracted by all the outside distractions. The Lord wants you to enter into the closet and shut the door. That's right. Shut everything else out. That's right. You know what the Lord wants? He wants your undivided attention. Yes, sir, man. Thank you, Lord. Brace it. Get your Bible and come read. Let twin go and get us back up. He want you to shut the door, block everything else out. Block everything else out. When we get to that point, you're going to see something. You'll see something. I want you to hear me talking now. We serving the same God that they were serving. Man, we come together and all minds are to, hallelujah to God are together on one accord. Everybody focused on the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Everybody focused on the Lord Jesus Christ. You're going to see something. You'll see something God knows. Bible talked about how that spirit came as a rushing. The Lord rushed them, y'all. They got together on one accord and the Lord rushed them. He rushed in on them. It came as a rushing mighty wind. Fill all the house wherein they were sitting. They weren't even on the knees. The Bible said they were sitting there. And the Lord came and sat and got right in them. They were sitting and he sat right on them. Fill them with the Holy Ghost. He filled them. Hallelujah. He filled them with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah to God. We serving the same God, y'all. Right. Same God. Same God. He wants us on one accord. Not here, my God, man, with strife. Enviness. Jealousy one toward another. Too much junk in the house. Too much junk in the house. He wants us together. Same love. One suffer, we all suffer with that one. One hurt, we all hurt with that one. One rejoice, we all rejoice with that one. He want us all together on one accord. He want us together. He want us together. Hallelujah to God. The devil purposes to divide us. He want us to be divided. The 
there's strength in unity. Where there's unity, there's strength. A threefold cord is not easily broken. Oh, the Bible declared, woe unto him that's alone when he falleth. He have not another to help him up. Hallelujah to God. The Bible said if two lie together, you can have heat. Do you understand? The Bible said, woe unto him that's alone. And, and look, and that strength and unity. Don't ever let the devil, my God, plan in your mind. We don't need one another. I don't need you. I don't. You. You. Know, I, we need one another. We need one another. We need one another. Hallelujah to God. Bible said by this. Shall all men know you, my disciples, by the love that you have one toward another. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah to God. By the love that you have one toward another. They can tell. There must be Jesus' disciples. Look how they love one another. They have differences, my God, but they forgive one another and keep on pressing. Yes, sir. We need one another. We got to have one another. Hallelujah to God. The only one that should be exalted. It's Jesus Christ. That's the only one we should be exalting, brother, Jesus Christ. That's nothing to none of us. Brothers and sisters, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a struggling preacher. Fighting every day of my life. Trying to do God's will. Don't get caught up in me. Hallelujah to God. I'm trying. I'm trying to do God's will. I'm nothing but flesh. Don't get caught up in me. That's nothing to me. That's nothing to none of us. Paul said, who is Paul? Who is Apollos? All we are is ministers. All we are is ministers. Man, we're here pointing you to Jesus Christ. We're pointing you to Jesus Christ. He's the author. He's the finisher of our faith. Jesus is. Jesus is. He's the author and finisher of, of, of our faith. I'm not the author and finisher of nothing. No man is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's about Jesus Christ. It's about Jesus Christ. You got to have the Holy Ghost. This thing got to be in you of a truth. It's got to be there. Acts 2 and 1, Brace. Acts 2 and 1, son. What did it say, son? And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. They was all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven like a rushing mighty wind. Sound came from heaven. The Lord then rushed them. They then got together on one accord, focused on the Lord, and the Lord then rushed in on them. And it filled all the house. Did it fill all the house? All the house. It filled all the house. Where they were sitting. That was their city. It filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues. Hallelujah. There appeared unto them cloven tongues. Like as a fire. It was just like fire. And it sat upon it each of like them. It was like fire. It was like fire. Hallelujah. It sat on each of them. It sat on each of them. And what did it say, son? And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Were they filled with 
The Holy Ghost. What were they filled with? The Holy Ghost. One accord. One place. Focus on the Lord Jesus. The Lord rushed them and filled all the houses. My God, all of them. Yeah. See the gift yes, of the Holy Ghost. Jesus. He rushed them. I said he rushed them. Jesus. This is written for our learning. We serving the same God, y'all. Same God. What did it say, Bracey? And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And what they began to do? And began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. You come together on one accord. One place. When you go into prayer, when you come in... In, in the house of God and even in your own house for prayer, shut the door. Block out all these distractions. Don't worry about that, my God, them clothes you got to wash. Don't worry about what you got to cook. Don't worry about all that kind of stuff. Don't worry about your job, brother. Give the Lord your undivided attention. He'll take care of all that other stuff in due time. But, but this time right here is dedicated to him. He don't want you distracted by the cares of this life. Cares of this world. Hallelujah to God. Stay focused. And watch God. I said just watch him now. Watch God do some things. I'm not just talking. I believe this. I said I believe it now. In the word of God. Down through the scripture. When the people would come together and you had some believers there and their minds was all on one accord, it ain't happened just in Acts chapter 2. This thing down through the book, man. Down through the book. Give me Acts 10, 37, son. Give me Acts chapter 10 and that verse 37. What did it say, Bracey? That word I say ye know. That word I say you know. Which was published throughout all Judea. Read it. And began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached. After the baptism that John, which John preached? How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost. I want y'all to notice something here now. I want you to notice who Peter preaching to. How, 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 what happened? How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost. God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost. And with power. Peter breaking it down to him. Amen. Letting them know about this Jesus that God filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Preaching the Son of God to them. What did he say, Bracey? Who went about doing good. He went about doing good. And healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Preach Jesus to him, Peter. For God was with him. God was with him. Break it down, Peter. And we are witnesses of all things. Peter said, we witnessed. We witnessed all things. Which he did both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem. We witnessed what he did in the land of the Jews. Peter said, we saw what he did in Jerusalem. Read it. Whom they slew and hanged on a tree. Peter said, oh, they slew him. They hung him on a tree. Him God raised up the third day. Oh, they slew him and hung him on a tree. But God raised him up the third day. And showed him Preach openly. Preach the son of God to him, Peter. What did he say, son? And showed him openly. Showed him openly. Read it, son. Not to all the people. Didn't show him to everybody. But unto witnesses chosen before of God. But unto witnesses chosen before of God. Even to us. Even to us. Who did eat and drink with him after he rose from the dead. We ate and drank with him. After he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach unto the people. He commanded us to do what? To preach unto the people. To preach unto the people. And to testify. And testify. That it is he. It is he. Which was ordained of that God. That God ordained. To be the judge. To be the judge. Of quick. Of the living. And dead. Preach Jesus to him. Peter is breaking the son of God down to him. Read it son. To him give all the prophets witness. To him give all the prophets witness. That through his name. That through his name. Whosoever believeth in him. Whosoever believeth in him. Shall receive remission of sins. Read it son. While Peter yet spake these words. I want y'all to hear me now. 
While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. Stop a moment. While Peter was preaching it, the Holy Ghost fell on who, son? All of them which heard the word. Fell on all them that did what? Which heard the word. Do y'all Bible say on all them that heard the word? Everybody standing there, sitting there, listening to the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as Peter was preaching it, Holy Ghost fell on them. Right. They was believers, brother. They was believers. Holy Ghost fell on all them that heard the word. What did it say, son? And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished. The Jews. They astonished. They surprised. Read it, son. As many as came with Peter because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. How in the world? He didn't feel these. Gentiles with the Holy Ghost. How is that? When he told us, don't mess with them. Don't even go by the way of the Gentiles. Only go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But all in a sudden now, he done filled them with the Holy Ghost. How in the world did it happen? Let me tell you something. The Lord do things at his time, not at our time. That's right. Amen. Amen. It wasn't time to go to them yet. My God, he told them to only go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He would bring the Gentiles in at his own time because they had to be adopted through Jesus Christ. They had to be adopted through Jesus Christ. So in order for the Gentiles to come on in here, Jesus had to come here, my God, man, and adopt them to break down that middle wall of petition between Jew and Gentile that he can make of twain one new man. He had his own time in doing things. Do you understand? He had his own time. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for Jesus. While Peter yet spake, the Holy Ghost fell on all of them. Did it say all of them? It fell on all of them. That did what, son? Which heard the word. Read it, Brayson. And they of the circumcision were, which believed were astonished. As many? As many as came with Peter because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. How did they know they had it? For they heard them speak with tongues. I don't trust no other way. I tell you that right now. I, I believe in give, getting it the same way they got it. These new ways that's popping up now. Well, I got it. I heard a swarm of bees. I speak the truth in Christ and lie not. This was told to me. So I was down in the woods. And I heard it sound like a swarm of bees. Went over my head. Never felt so good in my life. I got born again. Right then, that day. I don't trust beehive salvations. No, I don't, I don't want that. And that was from one of my family members. Blood, bro. My bl blood family told me that. I don't trust that. Only thing I trust is what I read there. What happened to them when they got it, Brace? For they heard them speak with tongues. And what happened? And magnify God. What did it say, son? Then answered Peter. What did Peter say to him? Can any man forbid water? Can any man forbid what? That would forbid water. That what? That these should not be baptized. Which, which, have, which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we. So they received the Holy Ghost first. But Peter was letting them know, y'all still got to be baptized now. Just because the Lord filled y'all with the Holy Ghost first, that's not to excuse baptism. Y'all will be surprised folks writing me and telling me they ain't got to be baptized. Let me tell y'all something. Anybody fighting baptism in the name of Jesus Christ, they don't have the right spirit. Let me tell you, when you got the right spirit, you won't fight Jesus in nothing. That's right. Man, if I wash my car in Jesus' name. Yeah, man. That's right. Don't bother me. Because I can read somewhere where the Bible said, whatever you do. Is that what he said? That's right. He said, whatever you do. And what? Or indeed, I wash my car in the name of Jesus Christ. That's right. Spray the tires in Jesus' name. Amen. Right. Don't touch me. I'm doing it in the name of Jesus Christ. 
Whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of Jesus Christ. Giving thanks to God and the Father by him. We give thanks to God through and by Jesus Christ. You got to come through the door. If you don't come through the door, you're a thief and a robber. Amen. Right. Jesus is the door. He's the access to God. Yes, <laughs> got to have the Holy Ghost saints. Got to have it. Paul ran up on John's disciples. Now I want y'all to notice their focus. And our focus should be the same thing today. Receiving the Holy Ghost. The preachers, the apostles, their focus was on the saints receiving the Holy Ghost. That is what their focus was on. And that should be our same focus today. I want y'all to hear what I got to say. It's good to work in the church. But if working in the church is going to distract you from receiving the Holy Ghost, from being focused on calling on the Lord, put your job on hold. That's right. Until you receive the Holy Ghost. I don't want nothing to distract you from receiving the Holy Ghost. Nothing at all. Do you understand? It, people are different. Each individual is different. So if, but if, if it's going to distract you, I'd rather for you to focus fully, 100% on receiving the Holy Ghost and not be distracted by nothing. Because receiving the Holy Ghost should be your focus. Acts 19 and 1. While Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus. And what he found, Brace? And finding certain disciples, he said unto them. What did he say to them certain disciples? Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? Have we received the Holy Ghost since what? Since you believed. Do y'all hear Paul? Paul said, okay, now wait a minute. Y'all believers? So have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? Since you've been a believer, have you received the Holy Ghost? You know why Paul asking this question? Because if you are a believer, you're supposed to have the Holy Ghost. Something's wrong, man. You mean we got all these believers and, and, and they ain't got no Holy Ghost? Paul is fixing to do a process of elimination. Because Paul know all y'all believers and they ain't got no Holy Ghost, we got to find the problem. We got to get to the root of the problem because that's a problem somewhere. What did Paul ask him, Brace? Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? Since you've been a believer, have you received the Holy Ghost? What the Bible said? And they said unto him. What did they say to Paul? We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. Y'all ain't heard whether there be any the Holy Ghost? Huh? Do y'all know this is the condition of many? Many today in this hour. I ain't talking about holding, most, most of your holiness folk know about receiving the Holy Ghost. But there's a lot of folks out there that don't know nobody receiving the Holy Ghost. Amen. Nothing, brother. Look here. Murray, get the calls. I get the email. Don't know nothing about it. Nothing. What did he say, son? We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. We ain't heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And he said unto them. What did Paul ask him? Unto what then were you baptized? How were you baptized? And they said. What did they say? Unto John's baptism. Oh. Now we're getting somewhere. Now, we, okay, okay, okay. So y'all believe us, but your baptism is not right. You got baptized unto John's baptism, and that was okay in John's time. Before the testator died. Because the Bible said a testament is a force after the testator died. Jesus being the testator, my God, after he died, then the Bible said that repentance and remission of sins must be preached in his name. So y'all got baptized under John's baptism while the testator was still alive. Now he done died and came back. Now you got to go back in his name now. You got to get it in his name because he done died. The testament was a force because the testament was in his blood. When he died, then the testament was enforced. You got to do it in his name now. So now they're going to have to go back to water. And let me tell you, it shouldn't be no shame in that. 
It shouldn't be no shame in that. Amen. Do you understand? Go, what did the Bible say, son? And, he's, and he said unto them, unto what then were you baptized? Unto what then were you baptized? And they said unto John's baptism. Unto John's baptism. What did the Bible say, Bracey? Then said Paul. Then said Paul. John barely baptized with the baptism of repentance. John baptized with the baptism of repentance. Saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him. That is on? That is on Christ Jesus. Do, do you hear, do you see who John is pointing them to? John baptized with the baptism of repentance. What did it say, Bracey? When they heard this, they were right, baptized. Last verse again, what did it say? Then said Paul, John barely baptized with the baptism of repentance. Say ye. Saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him. That is on. That is on Christ Jesus. When they heard this. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When they heard this, they didn't fight it. They was baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands upon when them. When Paul laid his hands on them. The Holy Ghost came on them. And what happened to them? And they spake with tongues and prophesied. That's the way they got it. That's the way I got it. I don't trust nothing else. Saints of God, you need the gift of the Holy Ghost. You know who we give it to? Give me Acts 5.30, son. Acts 5.32. Give me Acts chapter 5. Start at verse 30, man. Acts 5.30 said what? The God of our fathers raised up Jesus. Who did the God of our fathers raise up? Jesus. Do y'all Bible say that? Amen. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus. Amen. Read it, Bracey. Whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. You slew him and you hung him on a tree? Him hath God exalted with his right hand. God exalted that one y'all slew and hung on a tree? God to, exalted, him, exalted him with his right hand. To be a prince and a savior. To be a prince and a savior. For to give repentance to Israel. And? And forgiveness of sin. Read it, Bracey. And we are his witnesses of, the, of these things. And we are his witnesses of these things. And so is also the Holy Ghost. Do you hear the Bible? We witnesses of these things. And so is also the Holy Ghost. Read it, Bracey. Whom God has given to them that obey him. Hmm. So you got to obey him. Amen. Might as well, you ain't got to do nothing to receive the Holy Ghost. The Bible said he give it to who, Brace? Them that obey him. You got to do everything within your power. All the things you know you're doing that's against God. Stop it. Stop it. I'm talking, stop it. When that Bible says he get a Holy Ghost to them that obey him, you've got to do everything within your power to turn away from everything that's not like God. When the Lord sees that you're sincere and you're serving him to the best of your ability with the strength and the power that you have, the Lord will step in and give you more power. He'll fill you with the gift of the Holy Ghost where, then, where you can fully overcome. Fully overcome. But you got to put forth a real effort. You ain't living in the kind of way saying, y'all pray to the Lord, fill me with the Holy Ghost. He give it to them that obey him. Stop. Stop. You running with the boy, smoking weed, chasing women, stop. Just stop rolling it. Stay out the street. Ask the Lord for deliverance. Some things you can just put a halt to. You be real with God, he's going to be real with you. You be serious with the Lord, he's going to be serious with you. Do you understand? When you receive the Holy Ghost, you receive power. Now you got power to totally turn away from everything. But I'm going to show you something now. I'm going to show you something. You receive power to totally to turn away from everything that's not like God. But if you got the Holy Ghost, does that mean that you cannot sin? Some's doing this and some's doing that. 
Y'all just heard me talk about one accord. Look here, we got some heads doing this and some doing that. You know what it let me know? We ain't on one accord. But that's where my job come in. To bring everybody on one accord. Brothers and sisters, the Holy Ghost is power. You shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come. Although you receive power, you still have a free will. Do you hear what I say? Choose ye this day. Amen. You still got a free will. The Holy Ghost don't hog tie you and make you do nothing. The Holy Ghost is power from God whereby you can do God's will, but he don't make you. Because you receive the Holy Ghost, that don't make that flesh, that flesh, those fleshy desires just disappear. Do you hear me, bro? Because some think that. Some, some, some say, well, I got the Holy Ghost. I, I, I shouldn't have no, 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 no temptation. Are you serious? Then you're better than Jesus. The Bible said we don't have a high priest that can't be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was tempted in how many points? All points. In some points. All. Jesus was tempted in how many points? All. But yet what? Without sin. So Jesus was tempted in his flesh, but he didn't yield to it. So temptation is not a sin. The sin is when you yield to the temptation. When you give into it. That's where the sin is at. Do you understand? Because you receive the Holy Ghost, that don't mean that that, that flesh just, you know, close up. No, no. I, man, I wish it was like that. John, I wouldn't be fighting every day. Paul said that's a law in my members. Yes, sir. Did he say in my members? Amen. In? That's a law. Something in my members, Paul said, that's warring against the law of my mind. Paul said this thing is trying to take me back into captivity. It's trying to take me back. Did Paul have the Holy Ghost? Yes, sir. But some was in his flesh trying to take him back. Amen. And he got the Holy Ghost. Greater is he that's within us. That's right. We got the greater power in us. That's the Holy Ghost. But that's not to say that flesh of yours will not rattle. Amen. So true. Amen. So true. Amen. Holy Ghost, my God, man, is power. Amen. But that flesh is still there. Amen. Fighting against you. Amen. Trying to catch you at a weak, at a weak point. Trying to catch you at your weakest point to snatch you back. Amen. Bible teaches us to be not ignorant of Satan's devices. I got the Holy Ghost. Can I sin with the Holy Ghost? Yes, I can. Yes, I can. But that's a choice that I have to make. I got the power to resist that devil. Yeah, yeah. But can I choose to just, okay, I, I, I want to do this. I, I, I just, I, I, uh, I want to do this. The Spirit is doing this job. Spirit bring all things to your remembrance. Letting you know, you, you don't do that. Spirit of God is talking to you. Almost screaming in your ear. Amen. Run! Get away from that. Don't do that. Spirit is doing what the Spirit's supposed to do. But at the end of the day, you got a choice to make. If you make the right choice, if you follow the seed, John said, which is the word, my God, man, you cannot sin. I'm going to say that again. John said that seed remain in you and you cannot sin. The seed, the word, or God's spirit that's in us, if you follow it in all things, obey it in all things, you cannot sin. Amen. The sin comes about when you don't hearken to that word. Amen. When you lean to your own understanding, that's when you step out of bounds. Do you understand? 
It's not that the spirit didn't do its job. You lean to your own understanding. You stepped out of bounds. Peter. Peter stepped out of bounds. I said Peter did. The question is, did Peter sin? We're going to see. We're going to see that Peter sin. Listen, y'all listen. Did Peter have the Holy Ghost? Yes, sir. All right, let's see that Peter sin. Give me Galatians on two. Start at verse 10. Galatia Bracer chapter 2. And I want you to start at verse 10. What did it say, Bracer? Only they would that we should remember the poor. Read it. The, the same which I also was forward to do. Paul was having a conference with the other brothers. And he said they told him to always remember the poor. Paul said, I already was minded to do that. What did he say, Bracer? But when Peter was come to Antioch, I withstood him to the face. When Peter came to Antioch, I did what? I withstood him to the face. Paul said, when Peter came down at Antioch, I withstood him right to his face. One apostle standing the other apostle to his face. Why? Because he was to be blamed. He was what? Was to be blamed. Blamed? Amen. So Peter was blamed? Amen. But wait a minute, y'all. He was blamed. If he blamed, if he's blamed, mm -hmm. then the qualifications of a preacher is blameless. That's right. Amen. Amen. First Timothy 3 and 1. This is a true saying. If a man desire the office of a bishop, a bishop, he desireth a good work. Read it, son. A bishop then must be blameless. But Peter was what, y'all? To be blamed. But a, a bishop must be what? Blameless. But Peter was what? To be blamed. Peter out of the will of God. Go back to Galatians, son. Pick it up. What did he say? Chapter 2 and verse 12. What did he say? For before that certain came from James. Before certain came from James? He did eat with the Gentiles. Okay, Peter. Before those Jews came down from James, Peter was over there hanging out with the, with, with, with the Gentiles. Now keep in mind, the Lord showed Peter that God is no respecter of persons. But in every nation, he that fear of God and work of righteousness is acceptable with the law. Peter is the one that God showed that to. Keep in mind, Peter, my God, man, he saw all those things. The Lord showed Peter these things. Read it, Brace. For before that certain came from James, he did eat with the Gentiles. He ate with the Gentiles. But when they were come, he withdrew and separated himself. When the Jews came... Peter going to get away from the Gentile. Don't want to be seen with them. Wait a minute. He's now showing respect to person. Is that what he's showing? He's demonstrating respect, respect to person, bro. You mean to tell me the Gentiles, you with them, but because the Jews come around, you're going you're gonna to shun the Gentiles and I go hang out with the Jews. Man, you showing respect to person. James 2, brace it. James 2 and verse 9. James chapter 2 and verse 9, son. And all that getting, get to understand. Now he's showing respect to person. James 2 and 9 said, What, Brace? But if you have respect to persons, if you have respect to persons, you commit sin. Amen. Amen. If you have respect to persons, you commit what? Sin. If you have respect to persons, you commit what? Sin. Go back to son where you was. Galatians chapter 2. He didn't show respect to person. Read it, Bracey. But bef for before that certain came from James, he did eat with the Gentiles. Read it. But when they were come, he withdrew and separated himself. Read it. Fearing them which were of the circumcision. Didn't want them Jews to jump on him. No, you should have just taught them Jews. Taught them better. Don't fear them. 
they don't, I mean, they don't realize God has drafted in the Gentiles as well, then your job is to teach them. Amen. Don't go along with their mindset that I got to get away from these Gentiles. No, let me tell you something. Brother, that's, that's foolishness. That would be equal to me hanging out with Mother McClellan, my sister over here, uh, uh, Taryn's wife, hanging out with some of the, the, the ones in here that's white. But then when I see the Coopers coming, Kim and her children come, I, I, I see all y'all coming. And I, I've been over there talking to them, but then I see y'all coming around the corner. Get away from them. <laughs> Don't want to be seen with white folk. Do you understand? Yes, I want to hang out with the black folk, because black folk is around. That's what Peter did. That's what Peter did. Do you understand? He was hanging out with the Gentiles until he saw the Jews coming. And then he got away from the Gentiles. And, went, and Paul going to withstand him right to his face. He's going to withstand him to his face. And folks ask me, did he sin? We're we going to continue to read. What the Bible says, son? But when they were come, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing them which were of the circumcision. What did it say, son? And the other Jews disassembled themselves like with... And the other Jews disassembled likewise with him. Do y'all hear this? Like people, like priests. Look, following a leader. Following a leader. Leader can mess folk up, can't he? They following a leader. Who, 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 who did what, racing? And the other Jews disassembled likewise with him. Continue. And so much that Barnabas also you, was. You, you mean Barnabas too? All I'm going, following Peter, doing just like Peter. Like people, like priests. Same thing happened today. Read it, Brace. And so much that Barnabas also was carried away with their dissimulation. Read it, son. But when I saw that they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel. Wait a minute. They walked how? Not uprightly. You either walking upright or you walking wrong. Amen. Ain't no middle ground there. You either walking upright or you walking wrong. If you walking upright, that's righteousness. If you walking wrong, that's sin. Amen. What did the Bible say, son? But when I saw that they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel, what happened? I said unto Peter before them all, Paul ain't Paul ain't put him in no in no office. You did this openly. We gonna deal with this openly. <laughs> Bible said rebuke before all, Amen. that others may feel. Do you understand? What the Bible says, son? I said unto Peter before them all. What you say to him? If thou being a Jew. Stop a moment. Mm -hmm. Paul said, Peter, you supposed to be a Jew. Read it. Livest after the manner of Gentiles. Gentiles were sinners by nature. They were sinners by nature. And Paul fixing to tell you that. You supposed to be a Jew, but you're living like the Gentiles. What did he say, son? And not as do the Jews. The Jews are supposed to be God's people. You ain't living like God's people are supposed to live. What did the Bible say? Why compel us thou the Gentiles to live as do the Jews? Why are you going to compel us the Gentiles to live as do the Jews, as though the Jews, if you a Jew, living like the Gentiles? You telling them to live like the Jews when in reality you living like them. Paul, right up in his face, told him to his face. What did it say, Bracey? We who are Jews by nature. We who are Jews by nature. And not sinners of the Gentiles. He told him you living like the Gentiles. He's letting you know right now, sinners. That's how you live. It's very plain, Peter sin. Did Peter have the Holy Ghost? Amen. Did Peter have the Holy Ghost? Well, how could Peter sin with the Holy Ghost? He leaned to his own understanding. Peter is the one that the Lord had showed that there's no respect to person. The Lord showed him that, but he still leaned to his own understanding. Acts 10.34, brother. Acts 10.34. Then Peter opened his mouth and said. Who, who, who opened his mouth? Then Peter opened Peter his mouth. Peter opened his mouth and said what? Of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. Is this the same Peter? Amen. 
Peter said, God is no respect of a person, but what? But in every nation. Every nation. He, did it say every nation? Amen. He that do what? He that feareth him. And? And worketh righteousness. Is what? Is accepted with him. Well, if you know that, why are you separating from the Gentiles? Why are you doing that if you know that, Peter? Peter sinned by falling, by leaning to his own understanding. Saints, you with the Holy Ghost. You can sin by leaning to your own understanding. That's right. The desires of the flesh don't disappear because you receive the Holy Ghost. Romans 7, son. Romans 7. Start around about verse 18. Romans 7, 18. Let me, let me, let me help God's people here. For I know that in me that is in my flesh. Wait a minute. Hold, hold, Bracey. Paul didn't say in me. For I know that in me. In me? Amen. Well, let me ask y'all something. Did he have the Holy Ghost in him too? That's right. You know what folks say? They said the Lord don't dwell in an unclean temple. Some say you don't dwell in an unclean vessel. Have y'all ever heard that? Yes, How many have heard that? Yes, All right. How many have read that? How many have read it? <laughs> to say God don't dwell in an unclean temple is not written. If God didn't dwell in an unclean temple, none of us. None of us would have the Holy Ghost. That's right. The purpose of the Holy Ghost is to keep leading me and guiding me away from my own self. Amen. Do you hear what I said? Look at him. Away from, look at Holy Ghost leading God Murray away from Murray. I need the Holy Ghost in me to help me that I don't, uh, Oh, look, he'll be overcome by Murray. Now watch this. Read it, Brace. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth... In my flesh dwelleth... No good thing. Did it say dwelleth? Amen. B read that right. It what, Brace? For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth... Dwelleth? No, dwelleth. Hanging out right there. That's right. There's some no good stuff right down in your flesh. Right in you! Y'all reading this? You know what this, this is reality teaching. This here bring you back to the earth. Come on down. <laughs> this here, look, this here bring you home. This here keep you rooted in the ground. So you don't get beside yourself. You don't think because you got the Holy Ghost, my God, you some type of Superman. Amen. No. No. I don't care how much Holy Ghost you got. Don't put confidence in your flesh. That's right. Do you understand? Look here. Don't put confidence in that flesh of yours. Don't. A lot of folks say, well, I, I, you know, I, I don't fight, man. I, I, I ain't <laughs> never fight. <laughs> let, 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 now, now, I don't think violence is in these brothers. I don't. Bishop, you know, he's he getting a little slow now. You can see it. But let somebody break in Bishop Brian's house. And they got Mother Brian dragging her out the door. Yeah. <laughs> Bishop ain't calling the other elders. <laughs> Ella Murray, I need uh, I need y'all to go in prayer with me. It's, it's an intruder in my house. <laughs> he got Mother Brian right now. Look like he's trying to drag her out the front door. Contact the other elders if you would. And y'all say a word of prayer for him. I ain't going to ask the bishop that. I know better. If somebody break in his house and grab Mother Brian, 
Y'all pray for the intruder. Pray for Bishop too. But that intruder gonna need some prayer. That's right. Because Bishop gonna lay hands. And he ain't gonna use no oil. That intruder gonna turn Mother Bryant loose. <laughs> Do you hear what I said? Loose him. <laughs> Do you understand? But now violence is not in him. I, I, you know, I don't look at him like that. But never say what you won't do. That's right. If put in a situation. Don't put confidence in your flesh like that. I'm not a violent person. But don't, uh, don't come up in my house bothering my wife. Mm -hmm. I don't know how you may come out. That's right. Or if you're going to come out. <laughs> Do you hear what I say? This is just reality, y'all. But now violence, I'm not a violent person, but just, you know, you have to be real with yourself. I'm just teaching you don't put confidence in your flesh. Because in a given situation... Shamor, mm. my daughter, Bria, brother Brewster's wife back there, all of them got small babies, kids. I don't look at your wife as violent. Shamor, Shamor killed deal now, but you know. <laughs> I might not should have used Shamor, I don't know. <laughs> She went hunt, y'all, with my son, Brace. Shamor did. His wife went hunt with him. They sitting up in the deer stand. Shamor shot. Bow! Shot the deer, dropped it. That, that wasn't the worst part. After dropping the deer, he was down there just started squirming, trying to get away. She told Brace, go down there and cut his throat. <laughs> my Lord have mercy. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Man, I don't know. Boy, you better shoot straight up there. <laughs> Go cut his throat. Man, I've been hunting years. I ain't never thought about doing it like that. Go down there and cut his throat. <laughs> Only thing I can think of, son, walk up right. <laughs> Please don't step out of bounds. <laughs> but I don't see violence in, in, in them. But they all got these little babies. Let an intruder come up and go snatch their baby. I promise you, you'll see something come out of them that you never thought was in them. Because they was put in that situation. Don't put confidence in your flesh. Don't do it. I don't have the mind to ever hurt nobody. I don't have a mind to be violent or anything like that. But I can never put confidence in this flesh. Amen. We cannot do that. Amen. And don't you do it. Amen. Do you understand? Amen. Wrap it up, son. We got to get out of here. What did it say? For I know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. In my flesh dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me. To will. I want to do certain things. But what? But how to perform that which is good, I find not. I want to do, but how to do, I find not. What did it say? For the good that I would, I do not. The good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not. But the evil that I really don't want to do. That I do. You know what Paul is showing? A war in the flesh. It's a tug of war. Always. Do you understand? Righteousness, unrighteousness. Righteousness, you got the spirit and the flesh. Enmity. That's right. One toward the other. Flesh always pulling one way. Spirit of God pulling you in the right way. Because you get the Holy Ghost, flesh don't pack his bags and leave. No, sir. Do y'all know Paul is saying this while having the Holy Ghost? That's right. Paul got the Holy Ghost here. And he's teaching this. Don't put confidence in your flesh. What did he say, son? 
Now, if I do that, I would not. If I do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it. It's no more I that do it. But sin that dwelleth in me. Sin dwell where? In me. The sin that's in me done came out. Dwelleth. Where, Grace? Dwelleth in me. You have to strive not to yield to the desires that's already in you. That's right. It's already there. You have to strive not to yield to what's already in your flesh. Amen. Do you understand? It's there. And anybody say, well, it ain't, it, uh, uh, not in mine. He just showed you sin is in his flesh because he's lying. That's a lie. If the Bible said sin that dwelleth in you, it's in you. You simply don't yield to it. When that flesh said, do this. Well, the thought that came to your mind. But now what you going to do? Are you going to yield to it? Or do as James said, resist the devil. And he'll flee from you. You have to resist. Now when the Bible said resist him, he'll flee. It didn't say he was going to flee for good. Oh, he fleed, man, packed his bags and left. Devil don't go far, y'all. Devil don't go far. I got the Holy Ghost. I'm 54. I received the Holy Ghost at 19. Let me tell y'all something. I've been battling that flesh since I received the gift of the Holy Ghost. It ain't stopped. It ain't stopped. Matter of fact, it got worse. That's right. But I have power to resist now. The reason why I say it got worse is because all before receiving the Holy Ghost, I'm out there in the world, it wasn't no fight. That's right. I did what I do. I did, hey, <laughs> we did what we did. <laughs> You did what you did. But now all of a sudden, I'm in Christ Jesus. Now you realize, man, this is a fight. Mm -hmm. It's a fight. And Paul finna let you know, man, that's a fight. Read it, Bracey. What did it say, son? I find in a law. I find in a law. That when I would do good. When I would do good. Evil is present with me. Evil is present right there with me. Read it, son. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. I delight in the law of God after the inward man. But I see another listen, law. Listen, listen. I'm delighting in the law of God after the inward man. Remember, greater is he that's within us. So I'm delighting in that inward man. But what else is there? But I see another law in my members. Did it say another? Amen. I see something else in me. What does other law do? Warring against the law of my mind. What is it trying to do? And bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. So there's a fight going on. It does a war. I delight after the law of God, after that inward man. But I see another law in my members. And it's warring against the law of my mind. It's trying to take me back into captivity. The things that I was delivered from, it's trying to take me back to that. What did it say, son? Oh, wretched man that I am. Braces, it, did it say, oh, wretched man that I used to be? That I am. Used to be, man. I am. Body quiet. <laughs> oh, wretched man that I am. What did he say, son? Who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Yes, Who's going to deliver me yes, from the body of this death? What did he say, son? I thank God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. There's your deliverer right there. There's your deliverer. There's your deliverer. I thank God, what, Paul? I thank God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Thank you. 
I got to deliver. Yes, Fighting against my own self, but I got one to deliver me. Help me to overcome myself. Read it, Brace. So then, with the mind, I myself serve the law of God. With the mind, I myself serve the law of God. But with the flesh, but with the flesh, the law of sin. Thank you, Lord. And both is in your members. And the war is constantly going on. That's right. Don't deceive yourself. Don't put more confidence. Don't put confidence in that flesh of yours. Don't do it. Saints, you need the Holy Ghost. You need power. You need that power in you to help you overcome yourself. You got to have that power. Let me say this here as we come to a close. It's not hard to figure out who has the Holy Ghost and who don't. When it comes to even preaching, it's not hard. It ain't when it comes to saints, just the members. It's not hard. Let me show you how simple it is. St. John's son, 15, 26. St. John chapter 15 and at verse 26. What did it say, Brace? But when the comforter has come. It's the comfort of the Holy Ghost. That's right. Jesus said, when the comforter has come, whom I will send unto you from the Father. Do y'all know the Holy Ghost, the comforter is coming from the Father, but through Jesus Christ? Amen. It's coming from the Father, but it's coming through Jesus Christ. Amen. Time for me to get all this, but I can show you where God filled Jesus with the Holy Ghost and gave Jesus the authority to fill you and I with the Holy Ghost. Amen. God filled Jesus, his son, with the Holy Ghost and gave his son the authority to fill me and you with the Holy Ghost. Amen. That's what the Bible teaches. What did it say, son? But when the Comforter has come, whom I will send unto you from the Father. I'm going to send it from the Father. Even the Spirit of truth. Even the Spirit. Do you notice? First call it the Holy Ghost, now I call it the Spirit of truth. Even the what, Brace? Even the Spirit of truth. What is it going to do? Which proceeded from the Father. It's proceed from the Father. He shall testify of me. Don't let that go over your head. What that scripture just said is when you receive the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost is going to testify of Jesus. Think about that. A person with the Holy Ghost is going to testify and talk about the Son of God, Jesus Christ. It ain't hard to figure it out. Holy Ghost gonna make you testify, make you talk about, make you exalt Jesus Christ. So if somebody is not exalting Jesus Christ, they're exalting a man. Somebody is lifting and praising a man then you, it's not hard to realize that's the wrong spirit. The right spirit gonna make you testify of Jesus. Why Murray always talking about Jesus Christ? I got the right spirit. Y'all heard me say, I got the can't help it. And I don't wanna be delivered. Last night we was out in the lobby and I was playing with my grandkid and Sister Kim she came up, she said, the world needs to see this side of you. I said, you ain't always son of God. <laughs> she said, you ain't always son of God. Well, it's all right. <laughs> we, we were just laughing. But brothers and sisters, when you get the right spirit, the Holy Ghost, you can't help but talk about Jesus. You can't help it. Jesus Christ was filled by the Father with the Holy Ghost. Bible don't say when. It don't say when. I have to say that. 
Because you know what some say. When the spirit came down during baptism, in the body the shape of a dove and lit up on him. They said that's when he received the Holy Ghost. Man, you don't know what you're talking about. So you mean all that work Jesus was doing before then, what were working through him then? What did he have then? Let me show y'all something. Jesus was born. The Bible don't give us a specific time. He received it right here. We can't read where he received it right here. But I can show you when Jesus was born here in this earth, he had the Holy Ghost. He was born with it, bro. Do you understand? He was born with it. Now, can I read these words that he was born with? Uh uh. But I know based on scripture, he was born with it. Listen, that holy thing. Is that what it said? That holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. If it's a holy thing. Amen. Do you understand? In order for a thing to get holy, it's got to have the Holy Ghost. Do y'all know that's why Jesus could go back into heaven just the way he was born in earth? You know they said flesh and blood can't inherit. Do you know why the Bible teaches that? Now we coming to a close. But let me show you. The Bible teaches that because flesh and blood can't inherit because of, of, of our nature. We have a nature of sin. I can get Revelation chapter 21, start reading about verse 27. You ain't got to get it. It talks about how no sin will enter into the kingdom of God. Well, we was born in sin and shaped in iniquity. Our nature is to sin. So we can't go the way we are. But Jesus, the way he was born, he was born holy. If he was born holy, we are trying to change to become holy. He was already born holy. So in order for us to go to that holy place, we got to be holy. He already holy. He ain't got to change. What are you going to change from holiness? From holy to what? From holy to what? So the way Jesus was born, he could go right back to heaven just like that. Because he was born holy. Do you understand? Born holy. Me and you trying to be holy. He told us, be ye holy. We trying to get there, bro. We have good days and we have some rough days, bro. We have, you have some days when you hope Jesus don't come through them clouds. Jesus don't come today. <laughs> Don't come here today. Please don't. <laughs> don't come today. Because right now, we're supposed to be working out our salvation. And you should be working on that every day. Take your seat, twin. We got to get out of here, man. Saints, we thank God for y'all. We appreciate all of y'all. Thank God for you all, y'all. Keep us in your prayers. Pray that the will of God be done in our lives. Let me say to you that are watching live, we know we had some technical problems. We had a few technical issues here, but the entire video will go up, all right? Whatever they got on there, you can view that till we get back and get settled, and Twin will put the whole program up. All right, so we thank God for all of y'all. Appreciate all of y'all watching around the world. Don't forget, Lord willing, we'll be in Houston, Texas. We'll be in Houston, Texas two weeks from this weekend. Y'all pray for me, saints. I mean it. I'm not saying this just to waste time. Pray for me. It's a lot of work going on, and this body is tired. Pray for me. But I'm determined to die in the street if I have to, helping God's people. Two weeks from this weekend, we'll be in Houston, Texas. We'll be at the Hidden Garden Inn right there in Houston, Texas. We... Uh, look forward to being there with the Saints in Houston. That's January 28th and 29th. Service will be there uh, at the Hilton. You can go to our website, sonofgodlives.org. Click on the events page and you'll see the specific address. But Houston, service will be on that Saturday at 6 p.m., Sunday at 11 a.m. Two weeks after that, two weeks after that, we will be in Columbia, South Carolina. 
February 11th and 12th, we'll be in Columbia, South Carolina. Six o'clock Saturday, Columbia, and 11 o'clock on that Sunday. Columbia, South Carolina, we'll be at the Embassy Suites Hotel. Again, go to the website, get a specific address. Two weeks after that, we'll be in Greensboro. No, no, we'll be in Arkansas. We'll be in Little Rock, Arkansas, February 24th and 25th. Little Rock, Arkansas. That Saturday and Sunday, last weekend of, Arcan of, uh, of February, we'll be in Arkansas, Little Rock. Y'all go there, get the website, go to the website, get a specific address. Arkansas, we want all y'all to meet us in Little Rock. Tennessee, we want all y'all to meet us in Little Rock. We'll meet y'all there, get a chance to meet all of you. Y'all been writing and calling and pleading for us to come. We're coming. We want to meet y'all, all oh, y'all. We can't come next door to everybody's house. So everybody got to sacrifice a little bit. You got to drive a little bit now. So y'all meet us in Little Rock. We'll be there. All right? After that, we'll be in Greensboro, North Carolina. We'll be at the Sheraton Hotel in Greensboro. That's the end of February. We'll be there. All right? Go to the website. All the information is on the events page. Y'all keep us in your prayers. How many desire baptism today in the name of Jesus Christ? All right. Brothers, we thank God for y'all. I mean it, we thank God for y'all. I'm sure y'all have heard the word. You've been watching and listening. Make sure you're believing the Son of God. I don't believe you'll be here desiring for us to baptize you if you wasn't. And make sure you repent it of any wrong you've done. Now, y'all seem to be kind of some young, strong, strong backs. So we ain't going back to the Drury over there. It's cold outside. Can y'all handle the cold water? Y'all can handle it, brothers? We're bracing. Holy Ghost! <laughs> Jeremiah said, like fire. You're going to need it. <laughs> From this point on, make sure we put those waiters on the bus. From this point on. So they're in my closet, in my office. <laughs> make sure we put them on the, on the bus from now on, the waiters. But we're going to go ahead and get y'all baptized today. Brace, if you want to ease out there, if it's, I, don't want, I don't want them to get sick. If, if you think it's too cold, we'll go to the Drury and we'll rent another room. Drury got an indoor heated pool. That's where we baptized at this morning. But now, look, look, son, if, if, if y'all can handle it, then handle it. But if you can't, you got to go to work, so I don't want you to get sick now. All right. I believe the Lord to keep all y'all. I thank God for help, y'all. Because I used to do it all. But I'm going to tell you, them 54 years and them the back pains that I feel right now, they won't let me do it all no more. I thank God for help, brother. Do you understand? Saints, we thank God for all things. We're going to let him test the water. If it's, if it's, look, it was ice on my windshield this morning. I had to let my truck run a while to get the ice off so that we could drive to the Drury. So it's cold. If he says it's too cold, then we go into the Drury. It's about 10 minutes from here. We'll rent a room to use their facilities and baptize in the heat of pool there. We don't, we'll spend the money to be fine. All right? We thank God for you all. We're going to have some words from the ministers here. Minister Kev said something last night. Phil said something last night. Huh? <laughs> he said he would testify. <laughs> All right. We're going to have Bishop Bryant to come and say some words to us tonight, today rather. Bishop going to say some words to us, uh, whatever the Lord lay on his heart. And afterward, he'll pray, he'll, he'll give the benediction in prayer. Saints, keep us in your prayers. Mobile, y'all be safe going back. Y'all be safe going back. And we're going to have to break all this equipment down and get everything loaded up. But be safe going back. 
I may spend the night. We'll see. Body's tired. We probably just spend the night and get some rest. Keep us in your prayers. Lord willing, we'll see y'all back Wednesday night. Back in service on Wednesday night, uh, Mobile, and certain most of you all will be watching on Wednesday night. We love y'all. Y'all pray much for us. The will of God be done in our lives. I thank God for Bishop Brian. I'm going to turn it over to him. He's going to say a few words to us. I told Mother Brian I was going to mention this. We got in the elevator this morning coming from upstairs. And I stepped on Mother Bryant, stepped on just us two on there. And a lady stepped on there, a lady looked like her, comp her companion. And she stepped on there. And, and then Mother was on there. She stepped on there and she said, oh, nice couple. <laughs> All I could think about was Bishop Bryant. Lord, <laughs> please don't let that bishop hit it. <laughs> she said, nice couple. And, she, and then they kind of stood between us. She said, and I'm standing between y'all. I said, Lord, have mercy. <laughs> I said, I got to tell, I want to tell bishop for mother tell it. <laughs> before before the, we got off, mother told us that now, listen. Said he's not, said we're not married, we ain't companions. Said I'm, I'm his mother, like that. <laughs> there you go, mother, get it straight now. <laughs> I said all we need is for them to get off the elevator, walking out the door, talking about nice couple on there, and Bishop see me and mother getting off. <laughs> so, I don't need that. <laughs> so it was all innocent, Bishop. All I was doing was riding the elevator, brother, that's it. Bishop Bryant, thank God for you, Bishop. <laughs> thank God for you, brother. <laughs> God bless you, brother. That's all right, Errol. God, mm -hmm. God bless you, yeah. brother. At least it's not like you were dragging out the door, so you know what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, we thank the Lord. It's good for us all to be here. You know, we've had a wonderful time. Thank God, amen. Uh, last night and today, hearing the word of the Lord. Thank God. And I know in this message he was saying about my people are destroyed by the lack of knowledge. And as he went on to say it, because they reject knowledge. Thank God, amen. This weekend, he's been giving out some knowledge. And the only way you're going to perish is the Bible say that you reject that knowledge in which he was delivering to us. Amen. Last night and today. We thank the Lord, amen, for the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That is the thing that's saving people now. Thank God, amen. And the devil know that if you don't preach Jesus Christ and the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, that people won't be saved. But thank God, by the preaching of that, people get saved. I thank the Lord for the Lord blessing. Thank God, I, Ella Murray was talking about being 50 some years old. And I was telling Ella Hadley, I said, well, I have to tell him like my daddy used to tell us when we were coming up and we'd say, oh, I got back trouble and I got this. And he says, son, you don't have a back yet. You still have a gristle. Thank God, amen. So I'm telling him, wait until you get to the 70s. Thank God, amen. A few weeks from now, thank God, amen, we'll be reaching that 76. Thank God. And I thank God for Jesus. Amen. That we are still here, still trusting in the Lord. Thank God, uh, when we had it. Appreciation there, thank God, amen. And Mobile, I wasn't able to make it, thank God. Had some somewhat trouble. But you know the Lord is still good. After that, I went and had them to check me out and look in certain places and look around. And this, the lady, the doctor come out and told me, say, you're fine. The nurse say, you're the best looking one we had all morning. And then later on, I had them go around and look in my stomach, go down and look around in my stomach. They pull a little piece out to do a biopsy. I got the word back. Amen. Just the other day, say everything's normal. I said, don't you know God is good? Amen. Don't you know he is good, folks? And he heals, he delivers, and he keeps us. Amen. Thank God. That woman back there, December 26th of last year, we're going now on 52 years. We were married 51 years. And I'm here to tell you, I know he's good. Thank God. And you know, Ella Murray, the preaching and teaching about Jesus Christ 
Amen. I want to say this. Amen. He was reading about the 19th chapter of Acts. And just the other day, Monday or so, uh, I had a call, thank God, and a fellow called me and said, you know, I've been watching you a long time. Yeah, a long time. I see. He said, I've been supporting your ministry for a long time. And he said, now, he says, uh, we want to come. And when we come, we want you to baptize us in the name of Jesus Christ. He said, I've been baptized. We've been baptized the other way in another church. But he said, now I know and I understand I have to be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when he said that, I said, all right. I said, well, I want to know now how, what you believe. And he says, but he believed in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Amen. Amen. And I said, I know someone believed that he's the Son of God, but I said, do you believe he's the Father? He said, no, I don't believe he's the Father. Amen. I believe he is the Son of God. Thank God. I believe he died. He rose again and went on back into heaven. And I said, well, all right. And I knew I was coming here today. And I told him, I said, all right, we'll set up y'all baptism for fourth Sunday. Thank God. So fourth Sunday, we looked to baptize him. And when I got ready to leave, I told the elders, I said, now, if anybody want to join, be joined to that number, I said, be sure you find out what they believe right. before right. they can be joined to that number. We're just not baptizing folks. We want to baptize them that believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And don't stop there. That's right. Get the Holy Ghost. That's right. Because without it, you're none of his. That's right. And we got to have it, folks. Absolutely. And what been taught today, you can get it. Yeah. It don't take that long. That's right. God. It don't take that long. That's right. Thank God. Just believe in, thank God. Amen. If you taught that today, when Paul asked him, thank God, him, have you seen the Holy Ghost since you believe? And they talked about they didn't know whether they being the Holy Ghost or not. But he went back to Mark. He said, thank God, he that believeth and is baptized. Yeah, so you believe, thank God, amen, thank God. Then how were you baptized, thank God? Because you should have the Holy Ghost if those right. two things occur. That's so right. we thank the Lord, amen. Appreciate the gospel, thank, thank God, God, amen. God. Appreciate the teaching, appreciate all the ones we see here. I know someone said it last night, I must say this. You know why I come here? You know why I come here and I continue to come and I continue to press my way? Because I love the gospel of Jesus Christ, and I love the fellowship with the people of God. I love it, thank God. Nothing like it. I, I just love it, just coming together and seeing you all and being with you all and hearing your testimonies and singing the songs of praise to the Lord and talking about the Lord and not about man, thank God, and exalting him. See Pastor Hadley, thank God, here. Thank God, certainly appreciate him and all the other ministers. Now, all right, if you will. Amen. Let us stand. We're going to hey, brothers and sisters, sisters, real fast. We're going to do the baptism here. Basically, say you believe y'all can handle it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so we're going to do the baptisms here. So once we, we greet a few people and whatnot, greet some of the saints, then don't y'all run off. We'll get you, take you around the corner to the pool, get you some clothes, and the pool is right around the corner. Then we get y'all baptized. All right. So we'll do it all here. Also, in two weeks, we're going to be in Houston, Texas. I'll be teaching on that Saturday night. Bishop Bryant going to be teaching on that Sunday morning in Houston, Texas. All right? We'll see. We'll see. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, like, we thank the Lord. And let us just say a short word of prayer, thank God, and then we're going to go out and get ready for the baptism. Lord Jesus, we thank you this day. We thank you for your many blessings that you have bestowed upon us. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for allowing us to be able to assemble together this weekend and to hear your word. We are praying, Lord Jesus, that your word sink in our hearts and our minds. And give us a mind to walk upright and do the things that are pleasing in your sight. Father God, we thank you for sending your son, Lord. For sending your son in the light for sin for flesh and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for, him co for coming and shedding your precious blood. That through you, we might be saved. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for how you touch our bodies, how you send your healing, how you send your deliverance, and how you keep us day by day, how you protect us at night. Lord, when we slumber and we sleep, Lord, and we don't know what's going on around us, but yet you have your angels encamped around about us, and how they keep us all through the night, not the alarm clock, but how early in the morning, oh, you touch us and say, rise. And we're able to get up. We're able to put on our garments, put on our clothes. And we're able to say, thank you. Thank you for seeing another day. 
thank you for the sun rising. We thank you this morning. We thank you how you keep us all through the day. We just want to thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, we have another thanks for you. And then you keep us all day long. And right now, we're about to depart from this place. And we're about to start on our journeys to different destinations where we know you're able to keep us. Lord, as we were coming here, as we saw many accidents along the highway, but you kept us, Lord Jesus. You're able to guide us. You're able to keep us on our side. And you're able to give us, get us here safely. But we're about to journey back now to the different, different you, destinations. Jesus. Go with us. Be with us, Lord Jesus. Lord, keep us on our side and keep the others on their side. And get us back to our destination safe, Lord. And we give you the praise and we give you the thanks. Bless our hearts and keep our hearts and our minds and keep us staying on you. And again, we want to thank you for this day. Thank you for last night. Thank you for the weekend and continue to keep us away as we depart from this place, but never from your presence. Because in your presence, there's peace, there's joy, there's happiness, there is deliverance, and there is salvation. And we're going to ask you to keep us in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We pray and we ask these things. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus.